All right, what's up guys? Got another installment of my CD collection video here. This is going to be my symphonic, melodic, and progressive black metal section. Uh, this is just gonna be a two part and the other one's gonna be shorter than this one just cause I have some large discographies in this one that are kind of um, taking up a lot of space. So we're gonna get on into it. We're listening to some classic, classic traditional metal. Girl School's Take A Bite album, really, really good. Would you call this band a new wave of British heavy metal band? Because this is 88, and that's way too late for a new album, but I think they started a lot earlier because um, they were doing like splits with Motorhead and stuff in like 81, so they definitely did. Uh, Girl School, though, that's what we're jamming. So let's get on down to business here. This first thing I got here is a compilation of demos from Ancient. This is Eerily Howling Winds, the Antediluvian tapes. Um, these are okay. They're just demos. Not the most amazing thing in the world. Ancient's demos are fine but they're really not as exciting as I think they got to be a little bit later on. Um, this is pre-Vampire too, so it's not there as well, but yeah, Ancient. This is my favorite Ancient album. This is the Canyon Chronicles. This one seems to get a lot of crap from people, and I have no clue why, because it's a dynamite, dynamite record. I think it's because of how corny they got later. But this album is just a classic, classic black metal album. Lots of corn and cheese everywhere. That looks like the uh, female villain from the Night of the Demons movie, if you guys are familiar with that one. Really good melodic black metal with a huge concept of like a, <laughs> I almost want to call it a fan fiction of the story of Cain uh, dwelling into his kind of abyss. Really interesting stuff though, really great record. Next couple from Arcturus, this is Constellation, the EP from what year was this? I don't remember what year it was. Oh, it's My Angel as well as Constellations, little compilation disc, nothing exciting on the inside, all black. If you guys haven't heard this Arcturus album, it is really, really synthy, enormous soundscape, melodic black metal, just so, so good. This is a Prophecy Productions reissue as well. Looks really good as well. This is the best stuff. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce this. Arcturus album's name. If you guys don't know Arcturus, somehow it was formed by a bunch of guys from the classic black metal scene, the classic Norwegian black metal scene, being like uh, Garm and Hellhammer and a bunch of people like that, you know, giant names, titans of the genre. And this is just a dynamite, dynamite album. I think Hellhammer was a huge part of the scene entirely, founding several bands that are just top notch. Great stuff. Next, Bolsa Goth with Starfire Burning Upon the Icefield Throne of the Ultima Thule. Um, what a mouthful, just like Bolsa Goth usually is. I don't, first off, look at the research paper for a track listing. Just really, really over the top, super bombastic, power metal inspired, melodic, epic black metal, man. It just so, so good. This band is so fun. They're, they're corny, there's so much narration, it's ridiculous. It's just, it's good stuff, man. It's super enjoyable, it's super fun. Balsa Goth is a great band. And then a newer Balsa Goth album, the Cathodic Chronicles, I believe is how you pronounce it. Just a 2006 album, just kind of randomly thrown in the middle of their catalog. I thought it needed to have been, so I wound up picking it up. This is out on Candlelight USA, co-released with a Nuclear Blast. Really cool stuff. It's just not as, uh, it doesn't have the same exact sound as the beginning stuff. They got a lot more produced and a you know, the the niche of their genre kind of seemed to have lessened its, um, lessened its presence. Next, classic self-titled Borknagar album. Comes with a bunch of bonus material. Nice digipack reissue. Looks really, really good. This is just a, a must-have album if you're a fan of old-school black metal. Obviously came out in 96 and is one of the training grounds for, like, some of the greatest musicians in black metal history are all over this one. It's so, so atmospheric. It reminds me a lot of the early enslaved material, maybe closer to that and the Vindir sound as it would be to Dark Throne and Immortal uh, as far as being a grim. The Olden Domain, this is the first Borknagar I ever got. I believe this is the second record, maybe the third record. Lots and lots of clean vocals. It's a really epic album, which I really like. They really took that 
Viking metal sound and ran with it. And it's just a really, really well put together record. Really good stuff. Uh, Empiricism. I picked this up off of the strength of Austin Lund talking on heavy metallurgy about it and how much he likes it. Um, so I had to grab it and I saw it at a half price Brooks, funny enough. No, half price books funny enough and had to snag it and i'm actually really glad i did the one complaint i really have about this is it kind of keeps a similar pace the entire record but even that similar pace is incredibly good to listen to because it's so complex i mean there's so much going on uh really really good record comes with a cool century media order form too this is a band that everybody hates dance and laugh amongst the rotten by karak Ongren. i have seen this band live i was pretty impressed and I had to pick up the special edition box set of this one, which I have sitting somewhere around. I don't know exactly where it is. I think it's sitting over there. Either way, not particularly important. Came with some dice and random crap like that. I'll show that in my box set video. But a uh, really cool, cool band. Uh, they got it kind of boring later on. Kind of a little too over the top, a little too clean. But uh, nonetheless, Croc Ongren's a great band. Out on Seasons of Mist which seems to be a good label to be on if you're trying to get into some of these, if you're trying to break the mainstream in black metal. This is something that should be enormous and isn't. This is in Times Before the Light by Covenant. Uh, this band turned into a super lame, goth, industrial, electronic metal band uh, that is absolutely horrendous. But this is the Cosmic Key reissue of this one, which I picked up off of Hell's Headbangers. Somebody on Instagram made me privy to this knowing that it was... Uh, reissued as i said i don't know if i maybe i said it on my story once or maybe she mentioned it to me once that uh, this is just a, amazing amazing norwegian melodic black metal in the style of early demo gear with less of the symphonic element all right cruelty and the beast by cradle of filth i like cradle not uh i'm not a dweeb about cradle but i like cradle this is a good record one of the best in their catalog i would say um i don't have the other really classic first couple records which i wish i did i'll pick them up when i see them i did see it at a local sh or a shop i was at but i didn't wind up buying it uh damnation in a day the place i was at its card reader was down so i had to limit what i could spend there uh this is a great great album it's weird but i like that about it you know this is the first cradle of filth ever i ever listened to and ever bought so i i have a bit more of a fondness for it as compared to some other people the most recent uh, really big full length, I think, Existence is Futile. Really nice, really nice album. This is really a return to form right after Hammer of the Witches, which I don't have a copy of quite yet. Really good, really good reinstatement of the classic Cradle of Filth style that we all know and love, I hope. All right, Dark Woods, My Betrothed with Angel of Carnage Unleashed. I don't have the uh, classic era of Dark Woods, My Betrothed, just because I haven't gotten around to picking it up, and I think it's probably pretty expensive, but this is a newer record that came out in Napalm maybe last year, yeah, 2021, so two years ago. Um, and this is great. This band has maintained ability so well. It's really impressive, especially to be, you know, what is it, 25, 30 years into their career, and they're still putting out records that are this good obviously they were gone for a long time but it's really cool to see that they still got it this is a band i have a really weird relationship with this is nightwork by diabolical masquerade i've been wanting to love this band for i couldn't tell you how long at this point and it just never has happened um i had the big one that everybody knows the last album and i didn't like it and wound up getting rid of it and i saw this in a local shop for four hours and i was like ah, fine I'll try it. Fine. Uh, and it's okay. I'll I'll revisit it when I'm in this mood. Not the time of year for this kind of black metal for me right now. Uh, not really been hitting the spot quite like it could, though I have been listening to black metal. This is amazing for all Tid. Dimmobor Gear's debut classic album. This one's got the... Oh, the case is busted. That's annoying. Uh, this one has got the EP tacked onto it, which I don't know how to pronounce but it's amazing to have that material on here as well. Really cool reissue uh, um, out on Prophecy Publication and Nuclear Blast. Just a great, great classic album. Storm Blast, the original recording. You gotta have it, dude. If you don't have this in your collection, you're really missing out um, on some really good old school black metal. 
then what do we have here? The re-recording of Storm Blast. Um, not necessary, did not need to occur, but it happened. So whatever, I have it and that's about all there is to it. Then uh, Puritanical Euphoric Misanthropia. Uh, yeah, this is just, you know, David Borgir doing David Borgir. This is the first one I ever heard, one of the first black metal albums I ever heard. Death Cult Armageddon. I had a t-shirt of this for a long time, I used to wear it all the time. Not so much anymore, I don't even have it anymore. Oh uh, yeah, it's, this started getting corny. Next, Dragon Lord with the album Rapture. Dragon Lord is a side project of the one Eric Peterson from Testament. And this is symphonic black metal with a very heavy thrash leaning, which you would probably think maybe that has a little bit of a testament sound to it, and it does. Um, it's good. It's not the most amazing thing in the world, but it's entertaining enough to keep around, I would say. All right, classic alert. Good golly, knocking stuff over. In the Night Side Eclipse, and the slipcase package that I hate. It's all torn up. Um, yeah, just, you got Element. I mean, one of the most classic Norwegian black metal albums of all time. How much can a guy say about this one? I'm partial to this one. This is definitely my favorite Emperor material. Um, other people, for whatever reason nowadays, it seems like the, le the next album is the one that seems to be the new fan favorite, which is odd, but whatever. And that would be Anthems to the Welkin at Dusk. Really, really stellar black metal. A must-have. Mystical sounding stuff. Again, I love this album, but I don't like it as much as the other one. Um, it, it's good. Candlelight, Spine Farm, reissue. So I guess it's a finish pressing. And then Equilibrium. I want to say this is the last Emperor album. I picked this up for cheap somewhere, so I had to grab it. Um, yeah, I haven't spent much time with this one. I've heard good things. It's pretty entertaining when I have listened to it, but it's just not something I visit very often. Isan rocking the friggin' sideburns with a bald head is a very odd look, let me tell you, especially because I know he has hair. I don't know what he was going for with that, but whatever. And then the rest of this is all enslaved. Um, there's a, one more E up there, but I'm going to save it for the next video. So we're just going to power through it because I have most of the catalog. Not everything, but most of it. All right. This is the Yaxtragil album demo, I should say. This is the first Enslaved I ever bought and was absolutely blown away by how good this demo could be and just how well put together the songs are for a bunch of kids. Great, great raw black metal. Then I have Hordanist Land their side of the split with Emperor. I picked this up when I saw them live. Um, I had to get it. And then I realized something I'll mention in a second. Looks really good. I had an all over print hoodie of this one that funny enough, my wife bought me off of Wish. And you know, I heard about Wish being, you know, Wish. So I, I ordered it like a couple sizes too big and it was still too small and then it fell apart. So don't order enslaved merch off of Wish. <laughs> Um, no, this is the debut album with Nordic Nordonis Lands tacked on the back of it. Uh, you'll probably recognize that actually the original album cover isn't on here for whatever reason. Just a really killer, killer first wave or second wave Norwegian black metal album. What can I say? Frost, probably the fan favorite as far as the old school crowd goes. Really dynamite black metal, really well put together really fun i love this band i'm a huge insulin fan so all right then we got eld this is probably my favorite of the classic era which is hilarious because it got way cornier and that's part of what i like about it last of the classic era i would say blood him blistering fast for this band i mean they were quick on some of those records but this is a fast paced album man this is a killer killer record and needs to be loved more this is mandrium beyond the within haven't spent enough time with this one 
uh, comparatively at least. I would like to listen to more of this. I just need my enslaved kick to hit me again and all those are gonna get played again. I mean, this is the black metal equivalent of Opeth and you know how I feel about Opeth, so. This is my favorite enslaved album, Issa. First thing I ever heard, this was kind of uh, something that I heard really early on when it came to like my music listening in general. I think I first heard this album when I was eight years old. Uh, and it was just the title track, Issa, and I listened to it off of the Comcast On Demand when I was a kid, sitting at my grandma's house playing on the TV. And I didn't really care that much about it back then, but then I wound up listening to it again when I was older, and it, it, it hit me hard, man. Then, Below the Lights, I think this is another one of the fan favorites. I think it's a great album. It's just so good. I love the Proggy Enslaved, but some people really loathe it. I don't know. This is, I think, a low point. Uh, Monomission. Uh, yeah, this is not as great. It falls kind of flat. It's a little boring, but uh, it's it's still entertaining. I mean, it's still enslaved writing great progressive black metal. Then Vertebrae. This latter era, I haven't listened to too much of comparatively. I mean, I have uh, listened to quite a bit of in times, but this one's cool. Nothing special about it though. This one picked up is a basically a, a whole filler because this is one of those bands that I'm like that with, just like Opeth. Um, bands, it's just all those kinds of bands. And better look at the not very cool album cover. They should have just made this cover. I think it's way better instead of putting this stupid circle around his face for whatever reason. Um, not sure what the significance is of that artwork, but it's a good record. It's just, oh, well, it's just newer enslaved being newer enslaved. I mean, it's nothing bad and it's nothing amazing this one i spent a decent amount of time with uh, this is in times a little bit jacked up digi pack but looks really cool i actually really like the aesthetic of this album cover or this uh artwork style it fits well it's not the coolest thing i've ever seen but it's interesting to look at so uh, i have to go to a wedding so i am going to cut off here or else i would have kept going so i'll catch y'all on the next one i'll see you later keep it greasy